Yeah, it's, uh, I've said this a couple of times, it's a bit unusual, um, basically how this summer's been, we kind of knew it was it was in the offing, um, but I think just from our point of view, purely as a club, a group of staff and a group of players, it's always just been about trying to have the best plan in place, um, not to put players at risk of injury. Um, so many moving parts, I think when you look at the guys that were in international duty, Liam Kelly, um, these types of guys, then it becomes a crazy summer for them, not least the guys that aren't in international duty, so um, we've tried to we've, we've tried to be as, as kind of sensible as we possibly can, all the while trying to make sure that we brace ourselves for what's going to be a tough season, physically, mentally, um, and it's where I probably lean heavily on the medical guys and the uh, sports scientists at the football club to make sure that, yeah, I've got a plan of what I want to do f in football terms, but we have to make sure that we're all on the same pages, um, and, and that is to make sure that we don't put players at risk. How has the, the summer been in the, the transfer window? How have you found it? Ah, it's, listen, it's been, I think a lot of people will tell you it's been slow. Um, I think I've been pretty vocal. You know, I can go over the same points that I've made already, but um, the situation here is, has essentially been that we have to move players out before we can start to bring in fresh faces. Um, I think I have to acknowledge that at no point is this a, a slight on players that have been brought to the football club, individuals or anything like that. I think everybody can see that the, the style of play, the system um, has become different. So every manager then wants to recruit. If, if, I, if I'm doing my job right, I need to try and recruit players that fit, filter into the style and the system that I want to play. Um, and that have the credentials to do that, not just be a sort of squad player. I'm looking to try and bring in people that can really push the, the issue to get on that pitch on a Saturday and, and add something to the football club. Um, I've referenced the players that are not now at the football club um, off the back of what was a, 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 a pretty phenomenal run for us at the end of the season. Um, and I think we're looking at sort of six, seven on the basis of Callum Butcher's injury as well. So um, it goes without saying that these guys become a miss, but within that becomes opportunity for guys that are already here. And then hopefully through time that it, it can then be a situation where we start to freshen it up with maybe two, three, four bodies. Um, and, and ideally that's what I want. Every manager will tell you that he wants more uh, more players in to give us more options. Um, but I've always had this thing in my head as well that I don't want to run with ridiculous numbers because if we do that, then I think you lose a cohesion and a continuity in your group and then that's where you start to filter in bad mentality, sort of half measures in training sessions, not thinking there's a future for you to play on a Saturday. So as small a number as we can run with is a good factor. Um, but I think we all acknowledge that football's a little bit different now in the days of guys knocking out sort of 36, 37, uh, 40 plus games. is It's not a thing of the past, but it, it happens um, much less than it, than it used to. So you have to prepare and brace yourself for the inevitable knocks and niggles that, that, that come in football now. No, listen, it's it's going to be it's going to be really difficult. I've went on record several times mentioning my thoughts on Kev, my relationship with him, how good he was for this football club, how much the supporters appreciated him, um, and that goes without saying. I, I wish him all the best, I really do, in his future endeavours. Um, he, he came across a situation where it becomes life-changing money for him, um, a significant amount more money per week than what this football club could offer. Um, it takes him back to his homeland and all the rest of it. The one thing I know that is, if we were sitting with the finances of clubs like Ronigan, then you know we wanted to keep Kev at the football club, but but we couldn't uh, at the end of the day, um, and it now becomes my job not just to replace Kevin, but to also find different ways where we can be effective. Um, the the big factor that we all speak about with Kev was his goal scoring. Um, so when you lose that number of goals, you have to find a way of replacing it. Can you do that with one player? It's questionable. It's going to be difficult to do that. I, I really hope somebody steps up and scores that number of goals. Every manager does, um, but it's now my job to try and find alternative ways of scoring goals, whether that's pitching in more from set plays, from a midfield area, from a wide area. Then, again, this is where I have to kind of go back and really devise a plan that, that, that becomes as effective as, as it was for that stretch at the end of last season. Those players that departed this week, Riku Danzaki, is that just a case that he's not part of your plans? Was that a fitness issue? Can you go ahead and go into why he's left the football club? Nah, again, I, I think just going back to my earlier point there, really it, it becomes a case of who fits into the system and who contributes from what we're trying to do. Again, this has never becomes a personal attack for me. It's something that's been in football for a long, long period of time. You change managers, um, you change a style of play, and sometimes people don't really fit into that. 
Um, Riku was, I suppose, unfortunate in a sense at times where he was um, where he was carrying injuries, he was carrying knocks, he wasn't available, um, maybe wasn't impacting training sessions the way I'd hoped. Um, and again, I can only be honest in that sense. Um, and I think it then becomes my job to make sure he has a chance to play football. He come he come to Motherwell to be a first team player and to, and it, for him to hopefully contribute to what was going on at the football club at the time circumstances have changed and, and I didn't quite see them in my plans so um, therefore rather than again and I've been big on this and young players have heard that senior players have heard that uh, we had too many players for a number of different reasons last season and then you have too many people walking about a football club that aren't contributing and again sometimes it's not that they're deliberately trying not to contribute um, but I'm so big on this as a manager that people walking about the football club without very much motivation, it's never a good feel. Um, and I, I, again, was always a player that wanted to walk into a football club with, with, with the chances of playing on a Saturday. And I, and I think if you don't subconsciously, sometimes you just don't become a great teammate. Sometimes you don't look as if you're pushing the standards in training, etc. Um, and as I say, that's not necessarily just down to the player. Um, but I just want to limit that number of players that we have about here that if we have a few injured, then sometimes that can happen. But guys just walking about, not really being a part of that first team group, doesn't they, doesn't work. Seeing that, I know you said you don't want to limit the numbers. Josh Fowler appointed to Holland with you. Any update on that? Are you looking at him again? No, Josh was in with us for the, uh, for the first two weeks uh, uh, pre-season, the, the first week here. Um, and then the second week he came out to Holland with us. Um, but there's been no there's been no contract offer from us. I believe there's a few other options. I, be, I believe there's a few other clubs looking at him as well. Again, it was just one that our recruitment team had come up with. Uh, Josh done pretty well through through that period of time. It's a big jump, obviously, from where he was physically, technically. Um, but there's there's no contract offer on the table as it stands from us. Go back to Dan Zaki a little bit, Stuart. Um, you could a wee bit. Murray they took to kind of get him to Motherwell and going quite a lengthy contract. Has that been a bit of a loss that the club have taken? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's um, again without divulging too much. It's it's not. You know, we've been working away in a situation where Rico has another opportunity elsewhere, um, and it and it's not been at a cost other than the kind of contract that was there initially and that 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 weekly that weekly wage. So um, that was a situation where Rico could see what was kind of happening here. His representatives exact same and. And we come to an agreement where, where he would move on, but as I say, that's not been of extra cost to, to the football club for that to happen. And in terms of contracts, um, in terms of bringing people in this, this, this summer, how much does that kind of depend on Max Johnson? Are you hoping for some kind of fee for him when he moves up? No, I think it's, again, if you guys go away and do your homework and you, uh, it, I think people can find out exactly depending where Max Johnson goes and what club he goes to. Um, that's no secret for me. People can work out that sort of formula that is there and how much the football club will get back from that. There's no point in me trying to give you the exact numbers. You you go away and have a wee look and you'll find that out. I know, but how much does that depend on how much you're able to spend? Does that help you a lot in terms of that? Like no, again, these are situations that, that we realise were there in terms of players that were probably going to go out and the, the sort of sums of money that was going to come in. Behind the scenes, obviously, uh, I think a lot of clubs, um, ourself included, there were, the, the clubs were being run and there's a deficit there and, and obviously for Motherwell to function properly, it's not always just about me sitting here saying that I want all this money. I, I would want every penny back in into the playing budget, but sometimes it's not possible. As I say, if you've ran with that deficit, then you have to get yourself back in an even keel and make sure that you're set to move forward. And um, As I say, it's been very clear from to me, from the board, uh, from the chief executive, um, that, that we have to get players out to, to bring them back in. They keep reminding me because I keep saying it. But again, I'm not saying this as a as a stick to beat anybody over the head where it's just simply being transparent and saying that that's what it is and that's what I've been working towards all summer. That's what I've been doing. That's what the recruitment team have been doing. Um, and then we'll see where everything else goes from, from that side of things. Another player has been linked to the move away from our shields. Is there any, any sort of light? Shed on that? Uh, again, what I will give you is every single player that I'm prepared to let go for this football club has been told at a very early stage. Again, I'm not a guy that tries to manipulate situations to try and manoeuvre them out without me speaking to them face to face. I don't shut those conversations. Um, I've, I've spoken to every player that I felt was going to get limited game time here, um, and, and you know that's that, that's where the situation uh, sits. I seen the reports yesterday with, with Connor, and probably from my point of view, I'm not prepared to say too much more on it until such times as that's uh, that, that, that that's a situation that's that's nailed on and it's actually going to happen. So that's where we sit on that one. Moving on to the reason why we're actually here, the Vega Play Cup start tomorrow. How important a, a kind of a competition is that in this 
massive. Um, I'll go to my party line, which I've had since day one, I think, when I was managing up at Ross County. I heard a lot of people saying that it was pre-season. We're still in pre-season. Um, I'm going to try and find a formula, what I want to do. I'm going to try and get players fit and all the rest of it. I don't buy into it one bit. I'll sit on there. I think a lot of mindsets have changed through time because a little bit, to begin with, it was a suck it and see and find out how this all goes. And I think all managers will tell you that the quicker you can get it right and if you can get through that group and win your group and get into the next round of competition, then supporters are happy, players are happy. Um, I'm starting to see shoots of what I want and it takes you into a league campaign. So it doesn't bring about any unnecessary pressure or bad feel about your group. So um, you can rest assured that we'll be going all out to try and win uh, our group. And I, I would see us as that top seed. They'll keep pressure on us. That's what I expect, and the players already know that. But they heard that in day one in pre-season. That that's what we're working towards. That's going to be a precursor to the Premiership season. Do you set any targets at this point? Yes, yes, I do. Um, but again, I, I don't. I don't say that publicly. I, I make sure that that stays in house. The players all know what their individual goals are. Be it a young player, a senior player, um, but as a collective and a group, they know where we, where, what we're striving for, and what we expect to be able to do. Do you think a strong performance in the groups sets the tone for the season? Yeah, it can, but again, there's no hard and fast rule. I've seen clubs being excellent at this stage and then struggling at the start of the season. I've seen clubs that have been really poor here um, and then getting off to a flyer in the, in the league campaign. I think was it was St Mirren last year that probably every, everybody jumped on, not having a good via play. There was one or two other uh, top flight clubs that went out at the group stage and then you start to look at it and you say oh this is a disaster and then it flips on its head for me it's just about maintaining standards at everything you do and if you can keep doing that keep getting into that habit every single week then the rest of it starts to take care of itself and, and again that's a focus for me first chunk is the via play can we get through that and then we start to focus on the games that come thereafter